these are my, uh, this is my emotional world. This is my cogn cognitive world. And this is the overlap. Okay? That is pretty healthy. Okay? Because I've still got some separation between being an emotional, reactive person and being an intellectual and having cognitions that can counter sometimes my emotional uh, thoughts or my, my emotions and my reactions. This theory says that quite often in undifferentiated families that people are more like this. And this is the overlap. And here's the separation. And when that happens, people don't have the objectivity that they need. And so we have to help them separate out their emotional world and their cognitive world. Okay? Because there's important information in both. But if they are that overlapped, you can't, you can't get objectivity. The information that you need is not as accessible. So part of differentiation is keeping it is if is letting there be some separation in these Venn diagrams. It's also um, about helping families be connected and disconnected, together and separate. That is just a challenge, I think. I think it's really an interesting balance all the time. Yeah. Just yesterday with Griffin, he came home and I can't remember, he was so excited about something. Oh, I know. He was interviewing with some fraternity people. They drive here, I guess, from UNL and took him out to dinner. And so he's considering going into fraternities, which scares me <laughs> because I've been at universities too long. And, but I know there's good things about them, but I also know some challenging things. So I'm, you know, I'm getting anxious about these things. And then he also talked about that he's no longer going to be a dean of students or wants to work at a university. He now wants to work at a nonprofit. And I said something like, oh, that's too bad. And it really hurt his feelings. And he, he started reacting. And I said, wait, wait a minute, Griffin. I, I can see that, you're, that you've kind of withdrawn from the conversation. I, I think he was kind of tearing up. And he said, well, you attacked me. <laughs> I said, what do you mean I attacked you? And so as he described when, when that moment was for him, because I said, What's that? when was that moment for you? Because I certainly didn't mean to attack you. Um, but what we were able to come to is, and I, I finally said to him, you know, I think, Griffin, what's going on for me is uh, I, am, I am really struggling with this idea that you are leaving. And you are, I mean, the talk about attachment and separation issues going on. And I said to him, and my first year of college was terrible. I didn't do it well. And I think I might be carrying that with me now. My anxiety about my own first year of college is coming out. You're probably going to be fine. But I think that's what was happening. So for me, I could begin to understand that I, I'm, I'm transferring some of this anxiety uh, onto him. And it, it, was, it was kind of getting in the way of our relationship last night. But then he said, which I was really, really like, he said, Mom, he said, because I apologized, and he said, Mom, none of my friends ever have conversations like this with their parents. <laughs> he said, this, this would not happen. So I said, what do you mean, which part of this wouldn't happen? He said, first of all, there wouldn't have been an acknowledgement that there was something going on between the two of us. We would have been able to process it, make sense of it, and, and resolve it. See? So being able to have your emotions, be able to step back, objectively understand it, you know, kind of analyze it, and then change the relationship or the interaction right when it's happening, that's what this theory is trying to do for people. It's trying to help them do that so that it's not just about emotional reactivity. But that takes quite a bit of work on oneself and understanding your own family of origin, the patterns, um, yeah, as dysfunctional as they may be. Okay? So, unresolved emotional attachments to families must be resolved rather than passively accepted or reactively rejected. Okay? 
So there are some people that kind of throw their hands up, well, what are you going to do about it? So they're, they're passively accepted, and others that rebel. And say, for example, I was abused as a child, I, I reject that abuse, and I never, ever do any disciplining or, or correcting or nothing with my kids. I let them run wild, pure chaos. Doesn't help. It's as problematic as abuse. Okay? So, so differentiation is a mature and healthy personality, which then creates mature and healthy relationships. See how the intra-psychic crosses over with the inter-psychic? Okay. So, you have to differentiate self from others, especially in a family context. It's really important that you not have to think like the most, the strongest member of the family or have the exact identical values. Similar is all right, but identical, not, not so helpful because people don't usually see things the same way. There's quite a bit of diversity that happens. So this is about being able to have some diversity. And then this feelings and intellect, I hope I was able to help you understand how those need to be separate. There needs to be, I mean, of course there's always an overlap, but we work to help people separate that out. When you are not from a differentiated family, you are from a fused. There's fusion. Okay? There's fusion like this. See that fusion? That's fused. And you also have family members that are too close or too disengaged. There's not a good balance in those relationships between closeness and distance, togetherness and separateness. So this fused is dysfunctional and differentiated is functional, this theory says. Any questions about that? So why do we need to be differentiated and what happens when we're not? Okay? Undifferentiated people tend to react emotionally to family and to authority. So it might cause them trouble in their work life, especially with their bosses or with people that remind them of parents or any of the unresolved issues that they continue to carry with them. Certainly, I think it plays out in their choices of intimate partners, big time. When asked what they think, they will tell you what they feel because they haven't distinguished. It's overlapped. When asked what they believe, they will only echo what they've been spoon-fed instead of their own sense of beliefs and reality and experience. Infused families, especially those that are too close, they really only understand what the strongest member of the family's experience has been. They may not even be aware of theirs because they haven't had the freedom to experience it or, or uh, yeah, or explore that. They're so busy. So if I, if I am in a house with an alcoholic parent and that alcoholic parent um, 